Hi readers, we're continuing the novel story, The Sign of the Beaver, chapter four. After this chapter, you will have some questions to answer from your um, novel study guide. Okay, chapter four. It was hard to be deprived of the hunting. Now, whenever he went into the forest, the squirrels and the rabbits frisked about boldly, knowing perfectly well he had no gun in his hand. Once he was certain he could have had a good shot at a deer, instead he went fishing. And he knew he ought to be grateful for that creek and the pond could provide all the food he needed, even though fish didn't seem to stick to his ribs like a good meat stew. Here and there, in a sunny spot, he discovered a patch of blueberries. Gradually, his spirits rose again. The July weather was perfect. The flies and mosquitoes were less bothersome. He began to count the days ahead instead of the ones he had no, not notched. Two or three more sticks and his family would be here. The corn was growing taller. A little hard green pumpkins were rounding out. He could wait a little longer. Perhaps he even became a mite careless. He had been fishing all one morning. A good, clear day, the water still nippy on his ankles, the sun warm on his bare head. He had followed the creek a long way, and he had a lucky catch. He came whistling out of the woods, swinging four speckled trout. He quieted down. All of a sudden, when he heard a crackling and the underbrush close by, then he stopped short at sight of the cabin. The door was swinging open at a crazy angle one hinge broken. Across the door still, sill, some white stuff dribbled like spilled flour. With a shout, he dropped the fish and ran. It was flour, tracked all over the cabin floor. The sack ripped open and dragged across the room. The cabin was a shambles. The stools overturned, the shelf swept bare, the precious molasses keg upside down on the floor and empty. Ben must have come back. For a moment, hot sparks of anger drove every sensible thought out of his head. Then he knew it couldn't have been Ben. Ben was too fond of food to waste it. Indians? No, it wasn't possible. Any human being would scatter food about like this. With a sinking heart, he realized what had happened. He remembered the thrashing in the underbrush and had been a bear. Somehow, he had neglected to bar the door securely. Well, the damage was done and the bear would be half a mile away by now. Helpless with fury at his own carelessness, he stood for some time in the middle of the cabin, unable to pull his wits together. Then he went down to his hands and knees and carefully began to scrape up the traces of flour. After a time, he gave up. The best he had managed to salvage was two handfuls of gritty, unappetizing meal. Even though he took a good <clears throat> pewter spoon and dug into the hollows of the dirt floor, after a long time, he felt hungry enough to remember the fish. Half-heartedly, he cleaned them and blew up the fire and roasted them. He found a few grains of salt left in the tin to sprinkle on them. He would have to make the best of it. He wouldn't starve as long as he had a fish line, but tomorrow he would not even have salt. So that was a short chapter. Okay, but we can look at the questions that go along with this chapter. I'm not going to answer the questions for you, but I will read them, especially if you need help um, reading them. So before we answer these, think of the five W's. Who is the main character that the chapter is about, that the first four chapters are actually about? What is going on? Why are these things happening to him? Where is he? And when is this taking place? So who, let's remind ourselves, who is this chapter about? It's about Matt. What, what is happening? Well, Matt seems to be getting a little bit careless. He's getting very comfortable with his ability to provide for himself. This is the second time something has happened to kind of break his spirits. Do you remember the first thing that happened that broke his spirits? Was it when Ben stole his father's rifle, right? And so the second thing that broke his spirit was leaving his door unbarred un, um, so the bear could come in. Um, so that was the why, why is this happening? Where, remind him where he is. He's in the wilderness by himself. Him and his father came to set up a settlement, his house, his cornfield, 
And his dad left to go bit, get his mom and his sister. And when, again, this is the time of colonization, so the late 1700s, and I do believe the book stated it as 17, 1768, and that was on page two of the book. Okay, so that gives us a good reminder of what has been happening. So let's read um, the quiz time. So question one. On the back of this paper, write a one paragraph summary of the major events in each chapter of this section. Then complete the rest of the questions on this page. Okay, so if you would just stop to write a summary of what we've read for chapters one through four. Question two, why does Matt's father leave him alone in the wilderness? Question three, what two gifts does his father give Matt before he leaves? And I believe that was in chapter one or chapter two. So go back to the chapters to find that answer. And question four, what advice does Matt's father give him about relating with Indians? Again, chapter one or chapter two. How does Matt start fires? Why does Matt find it hard to trust Ben? That was definitely chapter three. Characterize Matt in one well-written sentence. So if you remember, characters, characterize means character traits. Okay, so what character traits would define Matt in one well-written sentence? Maybe you can put two character traits in that sentence. As long as you use evidence from the text to support the traits you are picking. Characterize Ben in one well-written sentence. So again, characterize is character traits. What character traits des describe Ben that we met in chapter three? Remember to include evidence from the text to support your character trait. Question nine, list the things Matt loses to Ben and the bear. Okay, can you think of four things that he's lost to either Ben or the bear? On the back of this paper, explain how you would have handled a house guest like Ben. So think back, when Ben first appeared, coming out of that brush, out of the forest, how would you have handled the situation? Remember, you're about 12, you're in the wilderness, there's really nobody else around, and you're all alone. How would you handle him? Okay. In addition to the questions, there is, I believe, a wilderness journal page, okay? So take the time and you could either choose, use this to think, answer as if you are Matt and you are in this situation that he's in. You know, make think of this as a diary page of what would you write about? Um, what would you sketch? What would you do? Or you can complete this page um, as if you are Ben and you can write about the things that Ben did and from the point of view of Ben and sketch the things that Ben saw. So you can go about it in two different ways. Okay. I'll see you for chapter five.